16 of May. I'm always ahead of behind. What do we do when we come to dates? I guess after a certain time, you just take every day as the day of the Lord. Amen. 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 So uh, I want to continue uh, with God's place in my heart on our series on rejection. And uh, so this might be, uh, uh, this would be re rejection number three. Uh, this series will focus on uh, generational curse, ancestral curses uh, that bring spirits of fear and rejection down the bloodlines. So uh, I'll probably repeat that uh, somewhere in the middle of this morning's text. Um, but the good news is, is that uh, according to Ephesians 1, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who had blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. I want to be in that heavenly place with the Lord, amen? Walking with the Lord, talking with the Lord, praying with the Lord, rejoicing with the Lord, worshiping with the Lord. I want to be in that heavenly place for Him. So as it is in heaven, then be in, in earth, in Jim Landry. All right, and so according to, as He had, verse uh, 4, had chosen us in Him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before Him in love. That is accomplished through the blood of Jesus at the cross. Not of any works that we have done, anything we can boast of. Amen? having predestined us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he had made us accepted in the beloved people. For as many that have received Jesus Christ as their Savior, the Savior of the world, they become his sons and daughters. Lord, we thank you for accepting us in the beloved. Amen. We are an accepted people. First John, the fourth chapter, verse 16, says it like this, and we have known and believed the love that God has to us. God is love. We can just stop right there and preach it. Uh, just preach that God is love. We can preach that sermon all day long. And he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God and God in him. So God's given us a nature to look at, given us an assessment of character there and belief. Here it is our love made perfect. So love is a perfecting work of God inside of our hearts if we will allow it. That we may have boldness in the day of judgment because as he is, so are we in this world. Present day. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. Because fear hath torment. He that feared is not made perfect in, in love. I don't know about you, but I have worked, I have walked in the past in those imperfect, imperfect times where when I realized in the midst of an accident or an injury or some things that took place in the course of the 30 years I've been saved, particularly in the early years, that that that, that fear and that rejection manifest, and I realized these are areas that need to be perfected in my life. Um, when you come out of a, a natural habitat where you had a tendency to judge, critique, a critique everything around you because of your uh, uh, your, your manner of upbringing yourself. Uh, I can't blame this on the family because I know for a fact mom would let, let me know what the buggy would tie the road if I got crossed the line. I remember that clearly. So it happened when I was a teenager and it and on into adulthood when I began to assess certain things with judgment. Because moms and dads here know about that when the when they that child crosses the line, wait a minute. <laughs> wait a minute. <laughs> and so I remember clearly, because I mean, you know, we just, I remember my mom would tell me, I mean, to tell the first blank. And, um, and she said, You will. I'll never forget this. I, I, that's why I, I really care about uh, uh, my daughters, my granddaughters. I really work on them hard. Uh, and uh, because uh, you will respect the women, you will respect women. And, um, the Bible says in verse 19, we love him because he first loved us. So we got to have him to understand that kind of love, people. The Lord's church has been redeemed. We are redeemed to the Lord, and we have been saved from eternal judgment. And we must accept the truth in God's word that we have been accepted and not rejected of him. So our comfort and assurance must come from the Lord. All comfort that only that he can give. So when we experience fear, we experience rejection, we have to turn to the Lord and say, Lord, help me. And any true believer, that's what they would do. They would say, Lord, help me. Or somebody, please pray for me because I don't feel, I feel fear or I feel rejection. Today is a day of deliverance. Amen. Yeah. And I can't preach this thing if I hadn't lived this thing, okay? 
That is not to say I won't experience some things uh, in days to come because there's so many things happen. Uh, uh, the television programs are just inundated, just full of nothing but catastrophe with first responders and it's TIS and 9-11. Uh, 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 I can't let that get in me. I was one of them. So I need to be able to see it superficially if I'm going to watch it for a moment. Okay? All right, so that's the real thing. But this is the real thing, the word. Amen. You got to get the real thing in there so you can, so you can be able to assess that. You got to get the real thing. I know what it was to live that experience. You get so, so loud. I mean, you, you just become morbid. People die, go to the next one. <laughs> ah, don't talk about the seals. <laughs> Where's the night at 8 o'clock? Uh, <laughs> That's a bit of you, my audience. That's the in-house thing I'm talking about. <laughs> Christians may need prayer and may need deliverance uh, from fear and from spirits of rejection. That's not a, a bad thing. It took four years when once God, the Holy Spirit, began to work with me on rejection. I knew I had it, but I justified it by saying it's just because I was um, not academically right, not uh, spiritually intellectually understanding where God was and I was surrounded by so great a crowd of witnesses, doctors, PhDs, authors and writers and here I am a small guy on the block in a big big Bible camp and I just I just it just it just crushed me. And Dr. Noble just come and hug me. He said, I'm praying for you, you come out in the name of Jesus. <laughs> and he would just hug me and love me and he would just look me in the eyes and say, You don't realize what's gonna happen here in years to come. You're gonna to go to the nations. You're gonna affect the world with this with the message. And it, to me, I didn't see nothing. One, I had a, a gentleman, an ex-military, I didn't know he was ex-military until he started sending money down to Walmart years ago. Me and his wife were retired up in Canada. And, uh, and he walked up to my face and said, uh, God, your gift make room for you. I, you know, I'm up there stumbling and teaching. And way back in the 90s, talking about, well, y'all forgive me, I didn't know how to pronounce pomegranates. I couldn't even pronounce pomegranates. I was, <laughs> so I was studying words, and I had, Psychopedias, and I had tapes and everything to try to learn how to pronounce words right. And then finally one day I said, I'm going to do the best I can. That was it. Yeah. Rejection had gone. And it took four years. So some, some of us may be going through some areas of fear of rejection. And, and, but I was determined to work hard. I was determined to, to conquer the giant. Why? Because God told me I could. Amen. And that he would do it for me. I had a family. And all the blessings of my, that I have have to go around the family and I understood that. I have an office and a call and a gift in ministry and I can't allow the gift to put things on the shelf that I don't want to deal with for the sake of the ministry. I have all the reasons out there biblically to go forward. So what's our excuse for not going forward with the problems we're having if it's not rejection? Why are we, not, why are we stumbling around and letting things just sit on the counter? Deal with your problems. They become God's problems when you decide to deal with it. And so rejection was my problem, and I chose to deal with it. Amen. And I can tell you many other things, infirmities and everything else associated with it. The headaches, uh, the pains, the sleepless nights. Uh, I didn't even have a headache for eight years. I had, I wouldn't take nothing. I never took aspirin or nothing like that. Eight years, and when I started dealing with rejection, oh, man. And I got a preach in the morning at the camp, hundreds of people. I couldn't understand what was happening. I knew it was that demon. You know, rejection is a, is a feeling like a, a not being wanted, or unloved, or being unwanted. You know, people experience it, you know, at different levels, different uh, in occupations, school, different that type of situation. A person may feel as though no one really loves them. When it gets so advanced and it gets so deep, uh, if they can't go there, and I have met people that went there just, well, nobody loves me, Jesus loves me. When they say Jesus doesn't love me, nobody loves me. You got to hear it. You gotta hear what they really say. Because we're created in his image. So that's what they really say. And so, you know, so love can be, uh, the rejection can be contained to a certain environment. Uh, educators, uh, sports, uh, the restaurant, at my job, uh, in a store. So we can classify people that we feel don't, that we uh, feel rejected to us. Um, uh, Based on um, ethnicity, uh, you can have a development of a feeling inferior. I remember one time I felt uncomfortable in the presence of the police. I love police officers. 
I love the service of it. They do, right? And everything. But one time, one time, I manifest out. I said, you used to be the devil. You used to be. You know? Nobody ever did me nothing else police. I had them all in my family all growing up. My uncles in Houston, the sheriff, here in Boulder, come down to our house. All right, I'm talking about in the 60s, in the 70s. But I, I experienced that for a moment. I, it wasn't stimulated because of anything recently on TV. This happened 10 plus years ago. So, you know, I had to deal with that for that moment. I could have shrugged it, but I said, no, I got an issue here. I better deal with that. And uh, a spirit of rejection can, can come through the womb because today's temp topic for 45 or less minutes is dealing with generational curses. And remember, with a curse, the demons are the ones that carry the curse. They, they don't want to carry. And so we can stop that curse by binding that principality and command it to go to where Jesus tells it to go. All right? And so the, the curse is just not just not there like somebody shooting you up with an injection. There's a, demons behind those curses that carry them out. All right? So a spirit of rejection works alongside with fear, though. So because uh, fear is going to manifest uh, with the, the rejection of spirit. Uh, it, it, it many times creates the inner voice or creates an inner voice that tells the individual, and this would be fear talking through rejection, you're so unworthy, you're so unlovable, you're so inferior. And I'm sure Nikki and the rest of the soap operas didn't help that either. <laughs> I know nobody watches the soap operas anymore. I hope not. Well, you don't have to now that you got you got real offers now. And, and people living it out. Uh, that's my chair. I've been here sitting over there 32 years. <laughs> so, at a funeral, uh-oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> you know, to a funeral, somebody tell you that's my chair. Uh, take it. <laughs> that's what I say, take it. Um, the, the, the enemy will set up people uh, to experience situations that confirm those negative thoughts. Uh, because negative experience serve as a form of validation that what they think, feel, or feel or have experience is the basis for really that's the way it is. It's the truth. So the enemy will set it up. So whatever you're dealing with, now listen to some spiritual nugget that the Lord just dropped in my spirit. Go ahead and tell them now. Whatever you're dealing with is because the Lord has allowed it to happen and the enemy is doing his part. And so there's a tug there against the flesh and the spirit. And they're contrary one to another, okay? So if you take the attitude, okay, Lord, you allowed this to manifest in my life, I choose to deal with it. Instead of saying, that never happened to me. He made me get in the flesh. You ain't gave God no glory in this thing. <laughs> you ain't gave God no glory in this thing. Not, we're not going to be long today. This is serious business. We're going to deal with this rejection, generational curse, uh, in this series of rejection number three. In the world that we live in, and it's easy to understand uh, the many different methods Satan may be using to release that lying seed into the minds of people, even whole groups of people, uh, that they are rejected people. Uh, it's the devil that, that's planting these seeds, people. Uh, in this third lesson uh, in uh, our rejection series, uh, I want to speak on a possible uh, reason for generational curses and how they may have released uh, during the generational curses demons of fear and rejection, and how we must, through Jesus Christ, accept our position as children of God, accepted it in the beloved. God is love. God loves his creation. We are a child of God. We must accept who we are. We must learn how to, like we do with infirmities, separate, distance ourselves from it, even though we may be going through a walk dealing with a situation in our personal lives or healing or deliverance, we don't, as my grandson and I, we like to swing in the back, we don't stop swinging in the back until the fact is we free. That's it. We don't, there's no, 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 no um, um, a compromise. There's no uh, surrender. All right? There's no draft dodgers in the spirit. There's just nothing. All right, so that's, I don't want anything in me, from an ingrown toenail to a dander, I don't want anything from A to Z that the devil can say, he just don't want to deal with that. Now, it may be something I'm not dealing with because I haven't been, been convicted by the Holy Spirit and driven to that part where I want to, and God is saying, the light is on and I'll deal with it here. All right, because there's so much in our lives, right? All right, we don't know about it. There's things that we don't hear about to a funeral when a loved one passes away, 
when we realize they have a certain condition, you may not feel driven to deal with that condition that day, but it's on your shelf. Because God's working on something else right now. Right. But at some point in time, you got to revisit. You can't say 15 years from now, I'm going to deal with how I look. You don't have it, but the ancestor did. It doesn't mean it has to come down here. That's words that have to be canceled. This is how generational curses continue to go forward. Words. Either God's word or words of being in the devil. Amen? So we're trying to get there tonight. I mean, today, we want to get some freedom here. Now, there are several ways the devil has sowed evil seeds of rejection. The feelings of not being accepted by God or by his people. The family generational curses. One, in uh, Exodus, the 34th chapter, verse 7. Uh, Exodus, the 20th chapter, 1 through 7. Uh, the sins of the father impact the third and fourth generations. In other words, they pass down through the bloodline. I'm going to explain that in a little bit more context, too. Uh, demonic spirits implement these curses in people's lives. Uh, they can affect us from the outside by putting thoughts in our mind, but also seek to enter us into... Uh, uh, our personal lives. Deliverance ministry involves the driving out of demons, which are a resident in a person's body or soul, not their spirit. God's word is what should be the residence in our spirit, soul, and body. I would have you prosper wholly, spirit, soul, and body, and it's what brings you liberation. So God told uh, the Israelites when they were going to the promised land, I think that's Numbers 33, 55, that when you go in there, remove all their pictures and all the statues and all that, and dispossess the land and replace it with my word. That's what he was saying when he said dispossess. So we have to replace it with the word. All right? So if I got a problem in my, in my shoulder, if I can tell you all the things I went through in the last two years, as God is healing every part, every fragment of my spine and all of the, you have 300,000 nerves from the spine that go all the way around all the extremities and deltoid and all the muscle, all that's affected. So he, he went there and did that work in 2015. But he also had to show me how to get all the rest of it so it all could be lined up. And I messed up one day. Some of y'all was here. After, after he healed my back about three or four months later, I got down there and started doing push-ups. Like Junior was like, <laughs> there's a little problem, you know. And it came back on me, but not like it was. So I, that was a quick turnaround there of pride that had to be dealt with. So that won't happen anymore. I'm going to jump down from doing a push-up. Not, not in here, anyway. <laughs> Jesus became a curse for us in Galatians 3.13. He broke the curses when he died and rose again after the cross, people. So although the curse has been broken, the spirits can still be operating within a person's life. They don't, they don't necessarily leave automatically at salvation. We get new, born-again spirit, but not a new body or soul. We must break this generational curse, people. Do you know what was the lifestyle of your forefathers, say, let's say 400 years ago? We all came down the lineage of somebody. Do you know what the lineage of your grand or great grandfather, grandparents, mother and fathers? Uh, are you familiar with all of the things? No, I don't know. Many people that are. They got people doing all this DNA or whatever search and parents and all that. That's fine. I don't have an issue with that. Um, but they're not looking at the things that are sovereign, the things that make, diff make a difference in our lives today to break the curses. And they're looking for money or, or ancestral properties. And, and, uh, and, uh, and that's fine. You know, somebody has to do that. That's not my part. The preacher has to be looking for the soul. Get us free. Amen? Amen. That, that's all. It's not that we don't have a place there as well. But I can't cross the line there. That's all I'm saying. All right, and so... Think about today, um, you know, we don't have a lot of time to cover everything, but I'll try to um, put things in certain categories. The history of all of your ancestors. Uh, for instance, in, in the colonization of America, uh, the wars of, in America, 1812, the Civil War, and, uh, and many other wars, uh, the bands of robbers from 1692, uh, I know we're more familiar with the Declaration of Independence in 1776, but uh, the first settlers came and the Indians were already here uh, in 1690, 1692, and so forth. All right, the murders that took place, uh, the enslavement, we talked about over the last 400 some plus years, uh, and um, 
the enslavement of the Japanese, when they were captured, uh, uh, they were brought here to Louisiana. Some were brought down to uh, Beaumont, outside of Cheeks. They called it Jap Road, because they changed the name for the last few years. Um, then there was the enslavement of the Indians, uh, the enslavement of Africans. Uh, not Africans, uh, some of them were people that were taken from here that commingled with the Indians and were brought back, and then 200 years later they came back. You know, so if you, it's kind of hard to know the history because it's not in the history books. You have to study uh, France and Europe uh, and other people that studied, so it's not in our American history. Not that it has to be. Uh, I, I would assume that there will probably be in the future if we can find some uh, balanced um, uh, writers that will do the research with a purpose of enlightenment instead of trying to get a, a, a mule and uh, eat a land or something. So we got to have the right attitude while we're doing this. And the attitude is everything. And I think we can, we can easily get that situation resolved. Um, the, um, um, that the pirates, Jean Lafitte, Houston, Galveston, front of Hebrew High School all the way to Louisiana, uh, when he took slaves, it didn't matter what color you were. In fact, if you study history overseas, the Arabs were the first slave drivers. And they were getting Caucasians and everybody. And they taught the Africans how to do it. And the Africans gave up their feet for their money. We call it money, but it was whatever produce, whatever they wanted. So, we, you know, we just got to look at this thing fair and square, you know. But I'm not here to try to uh, uh, deal with history, American history at this point. I'm trying to deal with rejection. You know, I'm going to get free from rejection if you feel like somebody owes you something other than God. And they, that debt has already been paid. <laughs> That's all I'm trying to say. That's all I'm trying to say. That's all I'm trying to say. It doesn't mean that these things don't exist and there will not be reparations. Uh, I don't have an issue with that. Okay? It's just that it's not my place. We need to know our place. I, I am a husband. All right, so I am not the wife. I just want to know my place. All right, so I am the preacher. Okay. <laughs> then you got the involvement of our forefathers. Many were alcoholics. And whiskey was a, was a big deal. I know about the Boston Tea Party, but whiskey was a big deal. <laughs> and that whiskey was strong. And uh, then there was drugs, uh, lots of drugs. Uh, and how about adultery in, in the forefathers? How about those that were in witchcraft? Uh, and so they allowed this curse to come down the, the bloodlines. And uh, during, this, during these times, we can see that the spirit of rejection is, is often passed down through uh, family line, through, uh, possibly through neglect. I, I was so hurt, I think I saw something on the news uh, some child was forced to sit up in a little chair for hours a day and the family just said something was wrong, their child wasn't responding right. One year old baby sitting in a little chair for hours, in a, tied down, and the family said something, my child was just not, something was not right. And then they um, decided to go to the, the nursery school and get the videos and they showed that the, whoever was in charge of that person, of uh, that child, was just tying the child down and going by their business. The child would just sit there for three, four hours at a time. I'm serious. Oh, it was so hard. And so neglect, that wasn't even apparent of neglect. Uh, and they said now the child suffered from PTSD. And I'm certain that's part of the lawsuit as well. But neglect can be linked to massive disrespect of God's laws uh, by the family generations before us, uh, regardless of, um, of um, racial identity. A neglect of God's word, uh, greed, and then dishonesty. Uh, well, even before we go there, uh, neglect was it was a, a a broad thing here in our nation and around the world. Uh, I don't know. If, uh, I like old stuff, so I like old English shows, um, uh, England, and all that kind of stuff. So I got to see how they act, and uh, we would take that today. Uh, men and women here in America wouldn't take that today. That people, we, we, for there's a fast of people trying to drive them back there. But that was a so hierarchy of social uh, injustice that's done to men and women. In fact, in our own nation, women weren't allowed to vote uh, until the 50s. If I'm not mistaken on the actual dates, but I know they were not allowed to vote. So you know what was happening on there with sticks and stones and, and whips and everything else when, when whoever man and uh, I, can't, I can't excuse that by any race, by the way. The Italians, the whites, the blacks. I can't excuse anybody not whooping up on a woman, which is wrong. Amen. So if you've done that, that's, you, 
be, get delivered from your rejection spirits that came down your family line. I, I'm trying to get a broad perspective of, um, for our viewing artists, because our viewing artists uh, is, is very diversified. And uh, so I have to cover certain topics. Uh, there could be a, um, a rejection that passed down because of selfishness. I mean, that, that was a lot taking place, for, for instance, in our own nation. Uh, there were droughts, there were harvests, there were people that murdered people for their land. Uh, even right here in our own city, uh, I think one of our businesses here, Ted Rush family, owned all the feeding properties and everything. And he don't know how, but where the MC Mel Gunter, <laughs> all that was blown, did that and granddad. And he ain't got a dime where he's going to be blown. He was part of his ministry for 15 years. And, um, and so there's a lot of things that have been going on. You can have uh, um, uh, just dishonest gain there. And uh, uh, we, we shouldn't be buying hot things. And uh, uh, that's a generational curse as well. So then there's other things can be passed down. Uh, physical, emotional, and sexual abuse has been passed down through some generations um, where people are controlled by others. Um, these are grounds demons use to place rejection in people, uh, such as the mafia, uh, the street gangs, bullies, are, are driven by these types of demons. Physical, emotional, sexual abuse. I mean, people, these are things that are coming down in many, many cases, and not all cases. Some things are demons that have gotten people because their spiritual gardens, gardens were uh, uh, open to demonic uh, demonization. Then there's drug use. Drug use down the family line may have opened doors to the spirit realm with uh, demons of lust. Uh, and so with drug use by our forefathers, it wasn't that the demons didn't want them to get high, they wanted them to get high so they can bring them down low. And uh, so many of that passed down to families. Uh, uh, drug use is a, is, a, is a major issue. We should not have any dependence on any type of means. Uh, we, we need to uh, 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 really consider God's word and uh, uh, try to minimize as much as possible uh, medication, particularly those that are uh, that deal with the psyche. And I mean, uh, uh, medications that enslave our minds. There are some uh, aspirins. There are some uh, other drugs that are uh, don't persuade the mind. Uh, and there are some natural remedies and some other remedies that have been done uh, through medical that uh, we feel is uh, favorable. But anything that will compromise our intellect, our, uh, such as opiates, uh, if you got to have a, a tablet to go to sleep, uh, you know, I, I pray that you would re really, those of you that are viewing, that you really consider that the, the rejection there, that you have not accepted the law and the fullness there in that area, and begin the process of turning that situation over to, to the Lord and get counsel and get some help because we can work through nightmares and unable to sleep. Uh, there are certain behaviors that, uh, that we may have omitted as children. If, uh, when I uh, went to bed at night, it was a time that my mom and dad decided to go to bed. Okay. And so when I, I was awakened, it was a time that mom and dad said I had to be awake. All right, and so on Saturdays, my dad would come in the back room and say, get up. All right, I won't sleep in all day. Get up. I'll go to bed early at night. He was not a mean man. He was not a, uh, he never put his hand on me. He always spoke, soft spoken to me. All right, and I think he commanded my respect because he did that. And so I just get on up, you know. All right, but you, you have to understand that some of us didn't have that. Okay, so that may make us most susceptible to drugs most susceptible to sleeping medications, most susceptible to needing AIDS, because nobody said, get up, because we was running the house. I'm just kind of give you the idea. I didn't have this in my notes. It just give you a picture of how, how this possibly could happen. Uh, repeated negative words coming down the family line and messages. Words do have power. Our whole walk is based upon God's words. Uh, Foul demons have their own words too, people. Uh, people being used by demons have been led by uh, uh, many insulted words that come through social media, through bullies at school, to commit suicide or even commit murder because the words offended them so much and they were so hurt. And I'm not telling you anything you hadn't heard before. 
We hear it on TV. Uh, a family didn't even know the daughter was being treated so bad in school. And when he went on Facebook, she committed suicide. That's, that should not happen. If you, could, if you could tell, and I watch my social media account, and I don't put a lot of stuff on there. Uh, the interest of uh, Jackson and a few others from Carol, we all, we all have our little accounts, and there's nothing ever been an arbitrary of stuff we do. Uh, and so, but I'm sure that just like, like myself, they, they also see that the, the social media account, realize that I like ministry because they shoot a lot of free ministry ads in mine. Or uh, they know if I like hot talk, hot sauce in restaurants, they shoot a lot of restaurants in there. Or if I Google my laptop clothing, which I shop, they shoot shoes in there. Okay, so you can't tell me that they're not aware of somebody getting insulted all the time, but they ain't stopping that. Oh. And I don't need to tell you about the election, I'm gonna be right around. I'll just throw that spiritual nugget out there. <clears throat> Then there's been broken marriages and families, uh, curses that came down the, the generational line. We don't know how many families had, had uh, uh, separations and divorces. Divorce tears down the spiritual walls of protection that God put in place for the family. And so when we come into the Lord, that's when we release blessings to our, our, our children. Because now we, gain, we, reject, we, we get back through Christ Jesus all that the devil tried to steal from us. And so, it is a major doorway when you when divorce uh, and separation uh, for feelings of fear and rejection to enter in or manifest if uh, if it's not already in the bloodline. So uh, broken marriages and broken families in our bloodline is a good possibility. Maybe you didn't have that, but you know them in your personal family, mom, dad, grandparents. But this is a door, and we don't know uh, how many generations back this may have been existing. Uh, there's been an inability many times to accept uh, parental roles. I was listening to something one day, I was driving, and I have my, my Bible scriptures on my, uh, uh, my, my truck. And so sometime I'll, around 10 minutes or five minutes to two, I'll hit the news. You know, I hit the radio. Sometimes I hit it more often than that, not just for the news, but I do know somewhere around five minutes till, or eight minutes till, I get local news on every hour. So if I had to look up there, it's five minutes. I'll, I'll, cut, I'll switch over to the radio. Okay. Well, I just want to be candid, which is there are times when I listen to the radio, I, I heard something, and I want to hear what, what the testimony is or what the comments are. They had this guy named on TV, and he was a uh, twenty-some uh, years in the army, and and he was just saying that um, that uh, he loved God and he loved his nation, and he said, I just want to stand up for the children, stand up for the fathers and, and mothers in our nation. Uh, our nation is not going to, to the dogs. Uh, we will stand up for righteousness and uh, stand for God. He said, I have a son that says he's a, a sheep, but he will always be my son. Somebody got to stand up for the babies. Yeah. He said on that TV, he acted new. He didn't say anything negative about his son. He just said to me, he will always be my son. He didn't say he loved him because he was doing this. He said, Father, scared now, uh, what do you think he is? Well, we're going to send you to counseling. How old are you? I'm 10, I'm 11. I didn't have to sit right down here and ask them what they are, men or women. The boys are good. I had boys do that, so I know. They're very vulnerable. Particularly to those texts to somebody saying, I see you quiet, I'm quiet too. And then six months later, I just want you to know I'm different. So parents, you need to know who your children are talking to. I'm talking to you on YouTube. I'm talking from a Harvard pastor because I didn't see children that are grown today. Ask me to my face, what am I? What gender am I? I know this for a fact. So, there's an inability sometimes to accept parental roles. The fathers and the mothers uh, must accept their parental roles. Don't just pass the buck to the, to the mother. Or pass the buck to the dad. Everybody got to do their part. And back each other in the discipline. Many quit. Pass the buck to the other parent. Well, you go ahead and do that. Now, I pass the buck, the real buck, to my wife. She take care of the bills, but I'm going to tell the children they ain't got it. The day ain't right to bread, I talk to them. <laughs> I know grandma will too. <laughs> and I, I, I instill confidence and, and, and joy and, and, and hope and trust and, and, and vision and, uh, and, and live the life before them. And this is what we do. This is what we do. So there's so many different types of attacks uh, that the enemy can use. So far, 22 minutes. Just a couple more minutes, okay, people? Um, there is a... Um, 
something I want to share with you on uh, my page is turned here. I want to keep going, keep us going. There are, there are basically five major results of rejection. Uh, these manifest as unholy feelings about self and others and compulsions, compulsions, uh, both because of demonic activity and because the emotions of the individual have been distorted and damaged. And I'm going to name them because I had I had all of these. Okay, all right, and I know what I'm talking about. Coming to a divorced family. Here, my dad comes from overseas. My dad was a highly decorated soldier, but we didn't know that he had been diagnosed with, with schizophrenia on the battlefields. And so I was, I was old enough to hear and, 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 and to realize uh, abuse physically, mentally, in the home, even at four and three. So I remember those I can still hear in my, in my, in my ear, oh, no, he made I can still, I can, it's just very prevalent. It's okay now. Because, you know, I led both of them to the Lord. I mean, I'm good, I'm good. I'm good, but some things, you know, would be there. And so it's there to help somebody else. So today, I'm helping somebody else. <laughs> no, I'm not walking, I don't care no kind of burden with this thing. But I'm so glad I had these experiences, you know. And then for God to, to, to say, I personally had my mother for us. I, I, my wife and I were there 15 years. My dad, I, I listened to his testimony, heard his testimony, and gave his testimony at his burial. All right, and uh, one of the things was the inferiority, a feeling of being lower in value, quality, or status than others, dislike, hatred of self. I had it all. Now, I, I remember in school, uh, after baseball season was over, because I, I was selected to go on a baseball, I started from the 10th grade, but then my grades would fall down because I didn't have to try to make grades and all the mistakes. I had a slow self esteem. I'd be looking out the window, and my teacher would say, Jim, pay attention. I'm looking out the window. Pay attention! And uh, I remember I failed. I failed, I think, English or something the second semester. I had to go to summer school. Then I made uh, A's in it. Now, why I couldn't make at least C's during the semester? I, I remember that. That was the only time I ever had to go to summer school. That was silly. I just took algebra one, algebra two, geometry. And I mean, my geometry, my wife was met her and her husband. And she said, the last time we saw her, she said, you were one of my best students. It just, it just melted me. Because I remember one day, she, and the whole class was going, I was sleeping to death. <laughs> She's like, no, let me in there, I'm going to sleep. <laughs> oh, wait. So I had this thing here, this inferior, but I, I had confidence on the, on the baseball field. I was, I was so confident. That's probably why I wasn't drafted, because you couldn't tell me nothing. I was just that good. I was laying down the front baseline, laying down the left field. Just made them do it. Coach just said, go do this. My dad would be in the back of the gate. Come out. You got him? I said, hey, watch this. It didn't matter who you were. I don't care for it. Forest Park, South Park. I didn't care who they were. I knew I was good. But I was so good, I was destruction destroyed to myself. That was because of my rejection of inferiority. I had insecurity feelings of not being safe from danger, harm, or loss, feeling unloved, chronic loneliness. And that was associated with the, with the separation of the, the marriage. And, Father going one way, mom going another way, and, and I'm certain that this led to a feeling of uh, not being safe uh, from danger. And so, um, so I chose when I went in the military to work with danger by being a combat medic. And so this helped me. Uh, first responder, uh, uh, fire brigade, all those things were to deal with danger. I, I didn't know I was trying to overcome because I didn't want to have to come to me, so I better bring it to them. Uh, and I, Inadequacy, feeling defective or poorly equipped for, for what is required in the ability of performance. Inadequacy, I felt that, and I'm telling you people, if you, nobody can tell it on the outside. Now, the teachers can figure it out because of academia, but a person meeting me, no way they can feel that. It was so masked, it was so hid. Uh, then the worries and, and fears and doubts uh, was another area that. Uh, of the uh, results of rejection that I experienced and guilt. Uh, guilt, most of the time the guilt was imaginary. Very seldom it was real. Like when I did something wrong, that guilt was definitely there. It was magnified. But a lot of times, as I look back, it was all a facade in my mind. It was a, I was a, a, a comedian. It was in the desert. Like I was needed water and I was having a barrage. It didn't really exist. And don't tell me this. Uh, didn't happen because I lived it. I, I remember just being called on the carpet at the plant. 
Uh, I've been retired 13, 14, 13 years this year. So I'll say 25 years ago, I remember the supervisors called me in on the carpet and there was something going on in my unit with me and another guy. Now, he's been there a few times for ministry. And uh, he threatened me and all this kind of stuff. So, you know, I, I would stay out of my truck all night long. And I, I had an office, I had a refrigerator in the stove, but I'd be in my truck reading and praying. And they called me in, you know, and uh, I thought, I, in my imaginary mind, I thought I was going on the carpet. They was trying to offer me a promotion. <laughs> And I had to pray and say, Lord, I just don't trust you. I'm going to get in there. I said, I'm. And I just relaxed. And I said, you know, my name is James Landon. And we know who you are. We want to talk to you. And I mean, it just melted me. I said, dog, you lying devil. <laughs> the devil was trying to make me stay one night. I'm serious. I remember this. So this is why I've been pastor here. So I'm telling you, we don't go through battles, people. And um, when an individual who has... Uh, these type of mindsets reacts to circumstances without the Lord and people instead of leading the leading of God's word and the Holy Spirit we can expect to to to, to see the manifestations of behavior such as this depression there can be hostility and anger and I'm seeing this in sometimes with young people and old people alike uh, today uh, it doesn't make a difference about the age anxiety nervousness worry and fears tend to manifest if this situation has not been mitigated or been resolved through, call, through uh, calling upon the name of the Lord through a uh, Christian relationship with God, uh, some of the things will cause them to go into withdrawal, escapism into excessive work, and become workaholics. Uh, TV or watching, just kind of find something to focus their mind on doing something else. Uh, alcohol, extramarital affairs, pornography. You'd be surprised how many ladies are in pornography. You'd have to think you would be surprised, viewing audience. Uh, pornography doesn't have to, it's not uh, singularly involved with men, it's men and women involved in pornography. Drugs, reading, uh, some people just get into higher education, uh, hobbies and fantasies. Uh, and then many times we observe certain behavior from people who are suffering with rejection and fear of demons. Uh, they get into, they have psychosomatic physical illnesses. In other words, they don't really exist, but in their mind it's real. Alright? And uh, I experienced this in, in the VA uh, 10 years ago. And when I said, wait a minute, wait a minute, let me just walk away from this. And I stopped going for like a year, and all that stuff stopped, stopped hurting. I had the back issue, but all those stuff went away. I said, oh, it's psychosomatic. I'm going there, everybody that's next to me, oh, my God, I need to get my business going. And I'm going along with this mess, even though I had my mouth closed. So I had to step away. So my real issue was the spine, my real issue was the back issue down the road. And so God had to do something about that. But I had to first get out of the emotion and get into the Word. Get into the Word of God. All right, so rebellion. Nobody loves me. I'll, I'll do my own will. Uh, people will, some people turn to witchcraft, domination, manipulation of others, and even in children. You know, um, we had a parent told us uh, at the practice uh, a couple of weeks ago, um, uh, he don't have no headache. He just doing that. He don't want to work out. <laughs> I mean, I didn't say nothing. You know, I'm worried about my business. So um, then there's uh, nail biting. Oh, my uncle uh, uh, Weston Ruggio brought me to the house when I was about 11 years old, 12 years old, and put this grease on my fingers because I used to bite my nails. And he told me, he said, "Son, this is monkey grease." <laughs> I, feel, I remember everything what he said. My dad was sitting right there. He's like. Now we, I'm putting this on your hands, so you, you'll stop biting them nails now. I'll stop biting them nails. <laughs> Uncle West the Rougeau. That's his name, Rougeau. Y'all think I'm playing up there? I bite them nails now, buddy. Now, I, I try to keep close now, but I don't think, man, I'll be scratching all over everybody's face. Grandpa just said, hey, how are you? <laughs> <laughs> and then we See, some areas where there's been bed wetting, of course. Uh, thumb sucking, I did do that too for a short season. I remember that. Uh, nervousness, uh, chronic lust problems. Uh, lust, lust can be for things like lust for uh, uh, sexual things may not be experienced by a young child, but they'll have a lust for cartoons or uh, a lust for a candy or a lust for some things, you know. And I, I, I'm a little different. Uh, I kind of spoil my children, but my grandmama, we had a lot of wisdom, and so. When I'd be in the house, they, my grandpa, my granddaddy drunk Pearl beer. He didn't drink often. I don't remember ever seeing him being humiliated with beer. Uh, my dad either. But I seen him get, my dad get to the juice up there. Not enough where he couldn't control.
control the city. But my granddad definitely not. Yeah, he, my granddad retired from over too. And so I'm sitting over there, and I've been coming in a teenage year, uh, where I'm over going through it, and Papa Ken Pearl put it right there in front of me, and I, I said, Grandma, this is nasty. Well, let's go ahead and taste it and see what it did. They were, they, they were giving me an opportunity to first experience certain things so that nobody else could tell me to come on and do it with them, and I just go crazy. Mm -hmm. All right, so they knew I would face that in time. And so, uh, some people they have chronic lust things uh, that they have to deal with, so it's not just uh, sexual lust. Uh, then there's uh, people experience repressed or suppressed emotions, uh, uh, performing to, to obtain acceptance. Uh, I did that. Uh, Self-justification, bragging, haltiness. Uh, then there's an experience, many experience of rejection, or retaliation, uh, self-protection. We have a, 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 a major problem in our nation, a major problem in France, um, in Germany right now. They're having some problems right now uh, with uh, a lot of uh, self-protection, a lot of retaliation, uh, all in the name of uh, identity. And I understand that, and uh, many of it is justifiable to a great extent. But once we come on Christ's side and we and we come to know Jesus Christ, we have a, we have a, uh, a clear understanding globally of the intent of, of the gospel, and it is the, the gospel, the gospel alone, that liberates men's souls. And so there's a lot of blame shifting going on with people with rejection, accusations, uh, uh, hyper uh, hypochondria, hypochondriacs. Y'all familiar with those terms, hypochondria? Uh, then there's jealousy, envy. Uh, it can get so, it, I'm continuing to to, uh, to to build what we believe these obsessive thoughts lead into schizophrenia, uh, double-minded, which is schizophrenia, two hearts, two souls, uh, and paranoia. And I'm telling you, I don't know of any one of these things I did not experience. I don't know of one of the things I did not experience. And so I, I am very thankful uh, for God uh, revealing to me forgiveness, uh, to break the curses, to accept His love, to heal, ask God to heal my broken heart from all hurts and, and pains, and to cast out the spirits of rejection that I, I walked in. So if you'll pray with me today, we have just a few more minutes as we're approaching uh, 35 minutes in today's service. I would like to contain it down to 45 if, if possible because of the number that, are, that is present in here. I am convinced that God loves us and that God wants to set us free. You may not be experiencing uh, inwardly, eternally, any type of, uh, not eternal, internally, not eternally, uh, any type of feelings of, of fear or rejection. Uh, but most people uh, have some things that they have to deal with uh, a little different. And, and, uh, and maybe not, this is not a strong man. But it's, so this would be a mind sweep. In other words, we can sweep through here and get out any of the little small uh, demonic powers that may be hoping one day they can bring in the big boys because you refuse to deal with the small ones. If you would like to repeat behind me, uh, Dear Heavenly Father, today I come to you to acknowledge that I've sinned against myself by believing the lies instead of what your word says about me. I renounce unbelief. I have let the pain of disappointment or feeling like a disappointment to others influence my thoughts and feelings. Your word tells me I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your word tells me I am not rejected, but I am accepted in the beloved. Your word says I am blessed and not cursed. I am the apple of your eye. I have worth. I have value. This day of the Lord, I break any and all agreements with myself and Satan that have allowed spirits of rejection, self-hatred, a spirit of abandonment, fear, insecurity, inferiority, shame, bitterness, self-pity, the unloving spirit, and unforgiveness, and any other spirit to have any place in my life 
my life and the life of my descendants. I renounce all of them. I command all of them to leave me. Now, go in the name of Jesus Christ and all of your underlying spirits. Rulers, controllers, controller rulers, and all supervisory spirits. Go in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, I repent for allowing these things I'm placed in my life. I thank you for forgiveness. I thank you, Lord Jesus, for taking my pain, my sin, my shame upon yourself so that I don't have to bear these things. I thank you for your precious blood and your word that cleanses my conscience from unprofitable thoughts and renews my mind. I am redeemed from the curse of the law. I am a believer in Jesus Christ and in his name. And on behalf of my descendants, I break all generational curses of rejection, pride, lust, perversion, rebellion, witchcraft, idolatry, poverty, fear, confusion, addiction, death, destruction, in the name of Jesus Christ. Go in the name of Jesus. I command all generational spirits, familiar spirits, family familiar spirits that came into my life during conception, prenatal conception, in the womb, in the birth canal, and through the unbiblical cord, to come out in the name of Jesus. I break all spoken curses by my ancestors, their enemies, and negative words that I have spoken over my life in the name of Jesus. I break all spoken curses and negative words spoken over my, my life by others, all in authority, ministry, doctors, educators, coaches, whomever, including all those in authority, in the name of Jesus. I command all ancestral curses, all of those ancestral spirits of Freemasonry, Knights of Columbus, idolatry, witchcraft, false religion, polygamy, lust, perversion to come out of my life, in the name of Jesus. I command all generational spirits of rejection, lust, fear, sickness, infirmities, diseases, anger, hatred, confusion, failure, and poverty to come out of my life in the name of Jesus. <coughs> you don't have any legal right to operate in my life. I bind and rebuke all familiar spirits, spirit guides that were trying to operate within my life, that came down through the sins of my ancestors, or their enemies, in the name of Jesus. I renounce all false beliefs, philosophies inherited by my ancestors, in the name of Jesus. I break all curses on my finances. The finances belong to you, Lord Jesus. I break all those curses from my ancestors that cheated, mishandled your money. I break those curses in the name of Jesus. I break all curses of sickness and disease. Command all inherited diseases. All inherited sicknesses to leave my body in the name of Jesus. Through Jesus, my family is blessed. Genesis 12 3. I renounce all pride, inherited pride, from my ancestors in the name of Jesus. I break all oaths, 
Miles, packs, made with the devil, made with the devil. By, my by my ancestors. In the name of Jesus, name of Jesus. I, break I break all curses by agents of Satan, agents of Satan. Spoken, against spoken against my life in secret. In, secret. In, the in the name of Jesus. I break all written curses, all written curses. By, my by my ancestors, their enemies, their, enemies. their judges, their doctors, doctors, and others. That would affect my life in the name of Jesus. I want to include educators. And all educators. I don't care how good you are. Somebody had made a C or something once at least. <laughs> it is in the records. You don't count against Jim Landry or you anymore. I can do all things in Christ who strengthens me. Amen. Amen. I break every time release curse that would activate in my life as I grow older. In the name of Jesus, I command all created rejection spirits, leave me now. Self-rejection spirits, leave me now. Emotional rejection, leave me now. Mental rejection, leave me now. Leave me now. All spirits of rejection, the rulers, controllers, controller rulers, and all the supervisory spirits, go in Jesus' name. Lord, Lord, fill me, fill me with the inheritance of thy kingdom, the of thy kingdom with the fruit of thy forgiveness, the of thy forgiveness in, the in the beloved. Fill me, Lord, fill me, Lord with, the spirit, with the fruit of your spirit, love, love joy, joy, peace, peace long-suffering, long -suffering, gentleness, long goodness, goodness, faith, faith meekness, meekness, temperance, temperance. against there is no mind, there is no law. May the Lord bless you, may the Lord keep you. I hope that the this, this third lesson has been a blessing to you as it has been to me. May God bless you. Amen. Amen.